I've been conducting a series of experiments using copper tubes to drill holes in various types of stones, specifically granite. Now, here I have a one inch tube. I just made, I just cast that out of some pre-mixed cement. Um, earlier depictions, for instance, you could just have heavy bags holding them down. It's really just to create a flywheel. Doesn't matter how it's made too much. And just for simplicity, of use rather than find a branch uh, for the length that I require. I just made my handle and then I can insert the handle and then change the length of the tube. So if I want a stand up version or if I want a sit down version, uh, that's just for simplicity of it. Now I've just wrapped that tape around there because that one inch tube, I just wanted, you know, again for simplicity, I just wanted to uh, be able to drill in different sizes. And so then I just slid this one and a half inch tube uh, in there and then the, the tape, you know, just uh, keeps it in there. That could be done with plaster, uh, with wax, all sorts of different, with, with cloth, but again, just easy to use tape. But, uh, or I've, I also just cut a different handle and, and I set up a different weight, but I just got used to this weight and this handle. So I kept on using it. There are a few, so for instance, after drilling, you can see there's a, all oh, that's the end of a copper there, copper being soft, the abrasive, uh, gets embedded in there. And you can think of that as like sandpaper. It is not the copper that cuts, it's the same way, it's not the paper, it's the sand that does the work, it's not the copper, it's the abrasive, the sand that does the work. Uh, I've done a number of cores, so, Grey granite, black granite, red granite, uh, this other type of granite, uh, actually I don't have it, but it's a, it's, it's a, it has a reddish tinge. Uh, let's wet that up so it's a bit more clear. Uh, this is a very, very hard granite. Oh, it's more of a grey, sorry, but it's a very, compared to the other granite I was using, this is much tougher uh, to use a stone hammer on but also to drill it's uh, much more dense and i have those two cores there and just for good measure i did a few in in marble and one in gray limestone from oberon which is as far as limestone goes about the hardest toughest type of limestone you're going to get now the marble and the limestone don't matter so much it's the it's the granite sack count. Uh, of the reason why I've done multiple cores is uh, firstly to get experience, but I, what I did was well, the abrasive. So what was the abrasive? This is aluminium oxide. Uh, ru think of rubies and sapphires, it's corundum. One of the sources for corundum, because it's, you know, if you might not have a corundum mine nearby, well, at your hardware you can get sandpaper and you need to make sure that the sandpaper is aluminium oxide. That's the important feature. Some sandpapers will be silicon carbide. Uh, this type of sandpaper is garnet, which is again semi-precious stone, very hard uh, material. But I've used aluminium oxide because that's what is found in the past, what was available. It's mentioned in ancient texts. It's found in uh, Egyptian statues and core holes as well. Now this sandpaper is 40 grit, uh, very coarse. Probably you won't get any, uh, any coarse of that at the hardware. There are some places that might give 24 grit, but 40 grit is very, very coarse. Well, that's what they call coarse anyway. So this is, I burn the sand. Now a good way to get it off is I just burn the sandpaper and then wash out the, um, the ash but this is what's defined as very coarse. Uh, but then I, well, I consider this fine, and then I have medium, and then I have very coarse grit. These are all aluminium oxide, corundum, uh, essentially. But also white quartz stone such as this, I broke that up as well to use that as an abrasive. And then I've just, again, put it through different types of sieves. So there's some, you know, like this type of uh, mesh, and I've and that was how I separated them. Now the reason I wanted to do different grits was, and this is 40 grit. Uh, 
there's a uh, paper back in the 80s on on the issue of core 7 they were using 80 grit which is twice as fine as this so that's um, and up to 240 grit the experiment by Chris Dunn was using 80 grit now they did not achieve big scratches in their cores they had to, you, know, you have to look up very close to see the markings well because they use a very fine finer than this they were using essentially dust um, so no surprise there so I wanted to use well I wanted to get even more uh, coarse than that and the way I did that was to get masonry discs such as this I chose this one because this is aluminium oxide it's not silicon carbide it's corundum aluminium oxide uh, probably synthetic but still it's the same thing it has the same hardness important to note that this masonry disc for cutting masonry has the only steel in it is there in the center all that's holding it together is glue and this mesh so you might hear well you know you need a steel disc um, hard steel to cut well again no it's the sand or the abrasive that does the cutting uh, the grinding it's not the steel and even tungsten tung the reason tungsten is used is because tungsten has a high hardness on most scale that's why it's important but so I, I broke these discs up into smaller pieces so that I could make larger grains and the reason for that was because I was able to achieve by using larger grains I was able to achieve different types of striations uh, these are two examples in red granite this one I used a very fine powder which would be defined as very coarse but I used 40 there and you can see as the sanded finish there's the red this is exactly the same stone this actually comes from the top of that so this piece of red granite is actually two pieces that have been glued together at the uh, kit um, bench top place now that's how the cores were originally this one is very fine powder this one was very coarse so I used this very coarse grain and I kept feeding new grain into the hole continually so that as this gets ground down into finer and finer I just kept feeding this very coarse stuff in there and the scratch marks are very different and that was for instance in marble here I have two marble samples one with very coarse grain to drill and one with very fine grain and that was the reason why I've done multiples in both uh, red grey and black granite to try not only different abrasives um, but also different grain so exactly the same stone with a very coarse grain continually feeding new grain in there to keep it very coarse and more smoother and then this more finer one uh, now the grain size will affect the the striations or marks that are left but it's also I noticed that different stone different granites red gray or black or even for instance this one leave different marks it's a, it, it's the abrasive the type of abrasive the coarseness of the grit but also the different stones themselves behave in different ways and also notice this like this gray granite was um, relatively easy so was the this black granite but this red granite was pretty strong this stuff was really really strong and that's a, a gray type a grayish type of granite um, get a, a version of a dry um, in there but uh, yeah so different stones different abrasives different size abrasives the thickness of it will affect I also did some like I would include sandstone sandstone is uh, the same or harder than granite even andesite diorite on most scale which is what counts when you're talking about abrasives and, and drilling and cutting sandstone although it's a very soft stone to work with is a very very hard stone in terms of abrasive so it's uh, quartz feldspar different minerals in there that give it its abrasive hardness 
And uh, okay, so that's the basics of the of these experiments why I've done multiple cores in the same stone, different abrasive, different coarseness, and uh, again different results in regards to striation patterns. Uh, so not just like the the thickness of the line, but also the shape of the line and leading to what could be thought of as a spiral, but that's uh, that will be for later. But what there is one thing that all of these stone cores share without fail using whether I was to use a flywheel drill like this or as others have experimented with a bow drill, they always get one same result. So whether it's limestone, it's tapered. Marble is tapered. Every single granite core I have is tapered without fail. So what is the, tapering is often said to be evidence of uh, proof, evidence of lost high technology. It's actually quite the opposite. It's proof of primitive techniques. And we'll go into that, but it's, uh, if you're doing this by hand and you're not getting a taper, I'd be very suspicious that you that you were doing it by hand. But tapering, such as in, is in core seven, is just, uh, it's no big deal. It's actually just what's going to happen. The, uh, now, for instance, my first cores, which experimental ones, um, although this was a, you know, a failure as a circular core, it taught me more than all the others combined. This was my first example and you get tapering on, but the issue with drilling such as this, unless you have a stand or some sort of guide to keep the drill straight, the whole point of it is learning a technique to reduce the wobble. And the more you can reduce the wobble, the more you can reduce the tapering, but if you're operating it by hand without a guide, you're, you just can't get, you can't overcome it. That's just going to happen. Um, that's just a natural byproduct. That's just physics and biology that cores will be tapered. So these are all the basic points um, in the, yeah, the reason to do multiple examples in the same stone, different abrasive, different uh, grit size to examine different striation patterns. For instance, these are both from the same piece of black granite, different uh, abrasive and different grit size uh, mixtures, like an emery mixture, which is basically crushed sandstone, crushed quartz mixed with aluminium oxide. And what you get is a series of different results. So I think that's uh, got like 14 cores in total. And there's the basics of it. So we'll have a look at uh, and examine these a little bit more and do some comparisons as in terms of the striation patterns, the abrasives, um, compared to the abrasive, the, the type of abrasive, but also the, the grit or the coarse value of it, how coarse it is. And yeah, so limestone and, and marble as well for good measure, but uh, 11 of the 14 I've made so far are of granite. And from there we can get a reasonably good sample. Um, as far as I know, this is the largest sample in different forms that has been um, done that I know of um, by far and I've built on top so for instance the Alexander Sokolov channel also his English language channel uh, Scientists Against Myth was the inspiration for this full credit to them the other ones who I think really cracked the, uh, the old depictions of Egyptian craftsmen using drills to hollow out vases and this type of handle and why this handle is so good because this type of drill it's um, not quite as good, but it, uh, it's nearly, it's pretty much as, as good as a power drill in terms of RPM. And again, different. Uh, so, you know, things like this, you probably have it in, someone's got it in their garden, like these decorative stones in garden beds, uh, sandstone. And again, if, you don't, you know, if you're lucky enough to have corundum, uh, best of, you know, good on you. I uh, wish I did, but uh, you can just use sandpaper but make sure your sandpaper is aluminium oxide or you could break up a masonry disc as I have to get larger grit size and again 
look for one um, that is aluminium oxide, not silicon carbide, which is a uh, silicon carbide is 9.5 on Mohs scale. Uh, aluminium oxide is 9, diamond is 10. But uh, as the uh, other experiments have shown, it's not just the hardness that counts. Well, diamond will leave a different striation pattern as to corundum and uh, other forms as well. So different striations uh, achieved by, you know, not just different grit sizes, but the, the abrasive itself leaves something of a fingerprint of signature to let you know uh, how that particular core has been drilled out. And again, quartz, just that's sandstone or whether it's white quartz such as this. These are all the types of things that were you know, available, used in the past, and and aluminium oxide was also used in the past, spoken of uh, samples that have been found inside core holes uh, on statues that have been ground down with a little bit of residue left, and they've an, an, um, done analysis on it, and yeah, aluminium oxide or emery. Emery is, um, is corundum aluminium oxide that's mixed with other abrasives. So you might have heard of an emery board for, you know, people use it to file their fingernails, that type of stuff. Emery paper is a common name. People still use it to describe sandpaper. Uh, this is garnet paper, but yeah, sandpaper is still just generally referred to as emery, em as emery paper or emery cloth. And so, okay, that's the, that's the basics uh, of, it, of what I've done. So before I go into uh, detail of my particular technique and how to best use this type of drill, uh, there's the materials that you might, you know, if you're interested, you can just get some, you know, copper pipe to make that weight. I just, uh, in the bottom of a bucket, I just use some uh, premix uh, cement and I left a tube inside there at the bottom just to keep that hole in there. To secure it, I just used uh, some sticky tape and so it just stops it, you know, uh, duct tape to fly, you know, to stop it from falling down. You can secure it any number of ways, you know, obviously they weren't having duct tape in the past, but that, that's just for simplicity, you know, you can, to, to secure this type of weight, you don't need modern material. And I just chose, I, I found a good handle and then I use, insert it into different into the tube so that I can adjust the size and either I can have a short version such as this which is a sit down type of drill and that's uh, shown in depictions in Egypt as well but they also show them using this type of drill in a standing position so I can just change the length and you know I could you know, it's easy just to swap over different sizes of um, of tubing as well like that's just an easy way is to you know just to use tape but of uh, wax or plaster or something else you can insert there in there to keep it in place so that's not really that's just an issue of you know, simplicity of construction uh, very simple you know, primitive materials could uh, do that just as easily in other ways as well all right so those are the basics of it um, and now I already did a preview but now we'll go through it point by point and uh, address each of the ancient lost high technology uh, questions that are raised uh, for instance for mica um, in the cores uh, the way that they've well okay we'll go through those but uh, first of all I'll go well I'll start with the tapering because tapering is what everyone who has done this experiment and shown themselves doing this experiment every single core is tapered uh, some it depends if you want to taper from so these are all thin at the top and wide at the bottom but there are a few other examples and they can be explained as well the alexander sokolov channel has something on that when i do the more in depth but so uh just as before i begin the full length one just go through the basics and that's pretty much it so in the next upload, I'm going to be uh, just get, yeah, going in the, into those technical issues one by one, uh, examining such, for instance, this particular type of drill, I can get a revolutions per, per minute of, f consistently, I can do 300 revolutions per minute using this drill. 
compare, compare that to a power drill, that's 2,000 revolutions per minute at top speed. I can improve, like I, you know, if I was younger and more coordinated, but in my better moments, I can get up to 420 RPM using this type of drill. 300 consistently, but 420 RPM I can do in spurts when I'm like really in the zone. But very, very minimum I, I, I can do at the moment is 300 RPM. And uh, so, cop, okay, we'll go into all of that, but that's, uh, there's pretty much the uh, core drilling for the moment. I Once I've finished with these and documented this and presented it in video, I'll probably put it in a, in a PDF as well. Uh, I'll go into some more complicated uh, issues such as these hollow um, oh, hollow tubes, uh, tu um, drills that are at a, that are drilled at an angle. This is all. It's actually once you sort of get rid of understand this and can do this, a lot of these you know impossible, might befuddling, unexplainable achievements in granite cores and uh, even vases. It actually becomes like it's not it's not a mystery at all. It's not difficult, and it's actually much faster than what you might have been led to believe. On that, that'll be the the next sort of series of projects after I do a replica of some famous stones in the Pumapunko region, uh, because again, yeah, they're actually quite easy and quite fast to do. But that'll be for the next projects. This is just to to detail uh, what I've done with granite and limestone and marble but 11 of the 14 cores I've made so far are from granite experimenting with different abrasives different grit sizes and this will explain uh, as every question I've seen raised I can now uh, not only explain but I have uh, replicated and can show in physical form so that will be the uh the next uh, video or two we'll see how time permits like i know that like half an hour or even hour videos is sort of what i usually do and people are sort of time poor as well so i'll try and structure it in a way that it's not so uh overloaded with sort of information but okay that's what's yet to come sgd cheers and have a good one granite cores all of this no mystery not at all i can do it you can do it and to re repeat these experiments, very, very cheap. Uh, these granite sheets were uh, offcuts from bench tops. The, literally, these were for free. This pipe cost uh, $20. It's one and a half meters long, so I have another, I have more of it, but uh, one and a half meters of one inch pipe was uh, 22 Australian dollars. This one and a half inch pipe, I went to the copper uh, metal recyclers and uh, they gave it to me for free because, it, you know, I told them what I was doing. Uh, yeah, I explained what I was doing and so they were happy to help. But also, even if I just wanted it for random reasons, it's like, this is, you know, nothing. Uh, so it's very cheap. Uh, these are about eight Australian US dollars, I mean Australian dollars. These type of discs, I think I've gone through, I've used two of them all up. Uh, this sandpaper sheets of 10, so I've gone for about two, maybe three packs of this. Uh, these are $6 Australian each. So look, in total, um, most of it's free and what I have paid for, even this copper tube, I could have gone for metal recyclers and they probably would have given me that for free as well. Um, $6 for a bag of pre-mixed cement to make these weights. Uh, a couple rolls of duct tape in our tree branch for free. So um, not only these experiments are very easy to do, they're also very cheap to do, and 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 in you know, uh, relative to amount. Of, so the flight time for you, uh, the amount of probably almost wherever you are in the world, whether it's a single or a return flight, I was able to do all of this in that amount of time. So I would ask why those who charge quite a bit of money for do to do tours uh, obviously have the cash for it obviously have the time because I mean they're flying around and doing tours you know they would have a duty of care in regards to their customers uh, there's a distinct that they haven't what you see here is a small part of what I've done in total and it is uh, 
I, could, I can't even say it's a hundred times more because the lost ancient high technology community, I've seen one experiment by Chris Dunn into cause and I'm going to go into that and I, I just don't consider that an experiment uh, and I'll explain why. But that's about the only serious uh, attempt that I've done. So all these other channels, taking people on tours, hundreds and hundreds of hours of footage, I don't know how many thousands of hours of travel time, etc. Uh, I've done more than all of them combined. And uh, who am I? And so I would love for them to talk about this, but the, well, I don't see it happening because what can they talk about? They literally have done nothing. They, they speak as if they're experts on stone and granite. I'm definitely not an expert on, on granite and this type of thing, but in comparison to them, I'm uh, a schoolmaster, general dean of the university, um, lord of the education system in compared to that because I just haven't seen anything, anything at all done by the Lost High ancient technology people. A lot of pointing at stones, a lot of claims, a lot of those claims just pure bunkum, like uh, it's not a matter of opinion, it's just a, a matter of pure fact that it's just wrong, wrong, wrong and they're selling people on this anyway. So that's where we're going, that's what we'll do next and I at this point feel um, confident that I'm uh, more than experienced enough to discuss these things and engage in them and uh, and just I can demonstrate it. So there we go, there'll be that's the focus of this. I know this is just a bit of a ranty video I just sort of made on the fly. But uh, there's the basics of it. Cheers, have a good one. Um, we're going to tear this uh, lost high technology thing to shreds because there's nothing there, nothing at all.